We invited 16 content creators to compete for the glory of being the first and only Pokemon Legends Arceus tournament champion. The tournament would have two phases. First, the catching phase. Players would be given half an hour to run around Legends Arceus and catch Pokemon for their team. Players had to catch six unique Pokemon, but different forms counted as different Pokemon. Once the 30 minutes were up, players would construct a team in Pokemon Showdown using the Pokemon they caught, giving them any legal moves and items they desired. The second portion of the tournament would be a best of one round robin tournament, with the players split into two pools. After seven rounds, the two players who were at the very top of their pool would advance to play a best of three grand finals match. Most of the players streamed their perspectives, but we also had a mainstream going on with myself, John, and my friend Aaron Cybertron Zhang commentating. With our players assembled, we were ready to start. Five, four, three, two, one. Good luck, everybody. have fun. See you in 30 minutes. Oh, God, good luck. Bye. Oh, God. All right, let's go. Where are we going? Yeah, go, go. Oh, God. Good luck. <laughs> we started off following Moxie2D, an Australian YouTuber. He's going right for Gyarados right at the beginning. I, I love this. I think Gyarados, one of the few Intimidate Pokemon, we know how good Gyarados is. Looks like he's looking for one. And oh, oh, no. Oh, no. That's one of the risks of using these Pokemon oh. that fly around is like, you know, they're really hard. I mean, maybe they're easy for other people, but for me, they're very, 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 very difficult to catch. Good good throw oh. there. Good throw there. Let's see if he readies another ball. Yeah, throw another oh, one. Oh, no. Throw another, throw another What was he thinking? Oh, no. It, is, it looks like he's having trouble with his, like, switch. So let's see. Moxie, throw another one. Get ready. Get it ready. Oh, no. No. Man, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. We jumped on board with Candy Evie just in time to watch her catch an alpha swine up. Then over to Stans, who unfortunately hadn't beaten the game and didn't have all the areas and resources unlocked. Stans manages to sneak up behind a Snorlax. What a play. He's not even using heavy balls. He snuck up around the corner and he's using great balls. That's going to make it way harder. And I, I'm actually not sure that he had... Um, I don't think he's beaten the game based on this. Stans jumps into a battle with the Snorlax, but I horse bear again to pick up the Luxray. Thankfully, this isn't a Nuzlocke challenge, but uh-oh, uh-oh. Hyper Beam, Giga <laughs> Impact. Oh, no! Oh, my gosh! <laughs> Guys, he only has two Pokeball types, and it's Great Balls and Wing Balls, and he only has 13 Great Balls left after this one, so maybe could have used a little bit more uh, on the resource oh, gathering front, and it no! breaks out. Oh, so good! <laughs> He's a madman. I this is who I'm rooting for now. He's got 13 great balls trying to catch a team of six. This is incredible. Switching the wing balls, I don't think that's very effective on Snorlax. What do y'all think? Uh, this is what I would do 100 percent It's not the strategy, but I'd be so oh! stressed. And it worked! Oh, he he it! It <laughs> we hopped on board with RT. He did get in fourth place in the last turn, both me and you were in. I mm -hmm. remember facing him. He knows oh what he's God, doing. Six Pokemon. Ooh! Is there any there's is there any chance he caught all six already? We hopped off board with RT. We spectated Ray next, who had clearly done his prep work gathering the stones needed to evolve his Pokemon, as he showed off a Togetic evolution right as we started watching. Things were progressing relatively smoothly. We were over 10 minutes in, and everyone seemed to be doing a good job. We were totally unprepared for what happened next. See if we can see it. Oh my gosh! Shiny Baneri! Despite being only 10 minutes into our challenge, Moxie had managed to find a shiny already. Moxie spent a full minute deliberating, only to fly away on Braviary. Excuse me, it'll be really interesting <laughs> to see if they if they're a player who has enough time or <gasps> is there any chance? Are they leaving the shiny veneer or are they just going for another angle? Oh huh? no, he's gone. He said peace, homie. Moxie spends a full four minutes thinking about whether or not to catch Veneri. But as the tournament host, it was time to move on to another perspective. Pokemon Challenges, aka Yawn, had done us a huge favor by subbing in when another player dropped out at 3 a.m. the night before the tournament and was actually playing while on vacation. I love everything about how scuffed this setup is. It gives me more confidence in how well he's going to do. Yawn decides to go after a Bronzong, sneaking up behind it, getting behind it. Oh, it's hiding behind the rock. This Bronzor's in the way, though. Oh my god, what a snipe! Did you see that? Over the Bronzor. Oh, but it breaks free! Uh, Yon would eventually catch his Bronzong, but with time ticking down, we wanted to see how more of the players were doing. We hopped over to Jaden's stream, only to see that she had already completed her team. Oh, oh my gosh! Whoa, guys, look at Jaden's team! There it is! It's ready to go! Wow! Jaden was making use of our rule that Pokemon with different forms count as different Pokemon, and had two Gastrodon on her team. We checked out Purple Cliff who was desperately running around looking for a Pokemon in the ice caves as time was running out when... Oh no! 
Permacliff triggered a cutscene. Oh no, this is no. gonna be wasting precious time. <laughs> no, 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 go away. We left Jack to work on his story and jumped over to Failboat, who was in pursuit of a very powerful Pokemon indeed. Losing a wing wall here. That was actually a pretty little nice. Far away. Oh yeah, a little bit out of range. Oh, well, he actually knows what he's doing with catching. I mean, significantly more than I do. I don't use any of these items. hundred percent. I'm surprised at how long the smoke balls last, but yeah, we see the value of that smoke bomb here. Keeping the mammoth swine from aggroing him, flying out of the way with Braviary, hitting a wall though. Uh oh, blocked by the ice, catching it out of the mammoth swine. Hey, a ooh, huge first catch. one. We're down to less than 10 minutes left at this point. And Candy Eevee was after a powerful alpha Empoleon. I like the, the willingness to battle by the way here, although, this could be a tough one uh, as Empoleon Naruto runs away, going after this Walrein here. I like Walrein a lot. I think it's not normally a. Oh, it's just dead. Never mind. Oh. Time is nearly out as we hop on board with Nogla. Two minutes and 30 seconds, folks. So Ooh. these are going to be the last catches that we see here, most likely. And, you know, Alpha Pokemon can be pretty, pretty difficult to catch. We'll have to see if it gets in the ball here. Three shakes for Nogla. And a break out down to two minutes, 15 seconds left. It's just one of those. It's an old, reliable Pokemon. You you really cannot go wrong with a Bronzong. Oh, huge oh. catch. Minute and a half that remaining for our final minute of catching. We went back to Moxie to see if he caught that shiny Baneri. Oh, he did catch it. Okay. And with that, the 30 minutes was up. Players had an additional 30 minutes to complete their teams in Pokemon Showdown. And then it was time to battle. The first match we were following was Alpharad versus Pokemon Challenges. Oh, okay. So we have a very, very trick room team and then a very, very interesting team. The battle starts and Alpharad leads off with Weavile and Arcanine against Yons, Dust Noir, and Rhyperior. So here we go. It's Choice Band, Arcanine, and Focus Dash Weavile against the, the Trick Room setup from Yon. And again, this is best of one, so this is going to be very volatile. The battle starts with a side beat up from Alpharad's Weavile, immediately giving his Arcanine maximum attack, followed by a crunch to one hit KO the Dust Noir. Yon fires back with Rhyperior's Rock Slide, KOing the Arcanine and doing lots of damage to the Weavile. Yon sends out Bronzong as Alpharad sends out Lucario. Here comes the second meteor. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Jacob once again goes for beat up. So let's see. Big damage. There goes Bronzong. So it doesn't look he like does Trick going Gastrodon up this game. in the back. Oh, oh. Wait, okay, it's Rock Slide instead of a ground type attack. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, and uh, Jacob has oh Clefairy. God. So Clefairy could come in here. And then it's how are you? Right? How are you going to? Oh, but those are two strong oh. stretch Pokemon. <laughs> the momentum has swung in Alfred's favor, but... I mean, what does Octillery even do? And then, like, maybe you can... Oh, I was going to say you could protect the Rhyperior there, but nope. But he goes nope. for Bullet Punch rather than Close Combat. Uh -oh. oh. Oh. Oh, maybe he thought it would oh. KO, but because of Solid Rock, yeah, it's not going to do it. Lucario hangs on, but gets burned. Oh, no. And goes down. Oh, oh my gosh. Ah. Rhyperior sometimes has the ability Solid Rock which reduces all super effective damage. And because of its incredible physical defense stat, Bullet Punch isn't able to pick up the KO. The battle isn't over yet though, as Jacob sends out Gastrodon. Alpha Red okay. there could have just gone for uh, follow me. And the Gastron does outspeed, so it gets the knockout. The weakness policy not really putting in too much work at the end of the day. And there is Energy Ball in the Octillery, but the Clefairy with redirection support just protecting the Gastron so nicely right now. It's three versus three, but there's so much bulk on Yon's side still. Three, both players have a Clef. Uh, there's Gengar in the back, which is very good into the Clefairy on, or Clefable on uh, Pokemon Challenges side, but Octillery, who's clearly very strong and a great switch here, recognizing he's in danger. No follow me. Minimize from Yon! No. Ah. Oh no! Oh my god! An amazing switch from Jacob puts him back in the game as Gengar exerts a ton of pressure on Clefable. But can he hit around the evasion boosts? I think Moody is good for Jacob here. It it, uh, it obviously lowers the special attack, which is really, really valuable since Gengar is, um, oh my gosh, committing here, hitting through evasion. <gasps> oh, he gets the one hit KO as well. Oh my wow. gosh. Oh, but but all of all of Jacob's remaining Pokemon are special and that artillery has plus four special defense. Yon sends out his final Pokemon, Snorlax. Well, does Gengar have what it needs to take on the Snorlax? I mean, Focus Blast is the first thing that comes to mind, but- Oh, you called okay. it. Oh, <laughs> huge damage. Scald comes out, but who's going to move next? Burn on the Gengar, but it's not that big a deal. And Gengar goes back oh, to oh. full HP. Oh, oh no, the burn. Oh, no. oh burn though. Oh. Jacob is forced into his final Pokemon, Gastrodon, but Octillery has four special defense boosts and has Energy Ball. Both of those just ended up punishing him really heavily. And ooh, Energy Ball there is just going to yeah. one shot Gastrodon. I don't blame him for going for it, but it's it's going to be the nail in the coffin, I it think. Was a really close match and a great way to kick off the tournament. That match was super exciting. 
You know what else is exciting? Subscribing to the channel. Supporting creators whose content you enjoy is great, especially when the creator is me and the content you enjoy is mine. Currently, only about 2% of my viewers are subscribed. So if we got that up to even 4%, we could be at a million subs in no time. Anyway, back to the tournament. The next match we watched was between Hopcat and Candy Eevee. We have a, a very cool sand team from Candy Eevee. Whoa! And kind of a, a like a kind of like a hybrid sand team on the other side. Let's see here. I did nothing. Wh what am oh, I missing? I oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> what? Oh, and it doesn't even go for. Wait, why did that do nothing? Isn't it poison? Can someone explain this to me? Why did that do nothing? Am I missing something here? I I don't know. Big knockoff from Eevee here. Another miss on Zen Headbutt though. <laughs> oh my gosh, seeing the power of that sand will come in. Spikes going up. Spikes not only something we see in VGC, but this isn't VGC. This is uh this is uh its own unique Legends RCS format. Oops, and I'm stupid. Knockoff comes out again. Boom for the bronze. Oh, are you kidding me? Explosion. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Wow. True to Gen 4, baby. <laughs> when actually having to bring Hippowdon out at this point, not allowing Sand to get brought back up, you know, possibly later in the battle, that could be really big in this battle. 100%. This is so fast paced, by the way. And the Shoka Berry as well. And there it is. There it is. Oh, <laughs> are you coming out? Protect. Huge Edge surf. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> oh boy, earthquake from Garchomp. I we didn't really talk about it, oh but just Oh my god. Man, forget any of my thoughts. <laughs> Holy cow, what a battle. Wow. Jaden versus No Glow was well underway. But we joined just in time to see 100%. And as we see, we're all jumping aboard with Jaden here with plus four, plus what is this? Plus three Gastrodon? Oh, it's dead. Oh, uh, wait, did she use both Gastrodons to yeah. get each other stronger? I oh think they used the double serve strategy and it looks like it's gonna pay off here. Wow, double. Well, I, I, just, I just thought oh, she would. The nasty plot. Oh my gosh, that's she's flexing. With Gengar set up, it easily finishes off the final Pokemon and Jaden takes her first round. The very last match of round one was well underway when we joined. Stans versus Captain Kid. Both players had clearly done their research and put together very threatening Trick Room teams. I see a Scizor and me and Aaron were Captain talking Kid's earlier. Captain Kid's team is so good. That's uh -huh. like, wait, so is Stans's. They're, the I think these two are actually pretty, I think I think both of them are, it's unfortunate they have to play because this could be, I, I wouldn't be surprised like in a normal, just based on teams, if this was like a final matchup. And I we were talking about the Trick Room versus Trick Room matchup here. Iron Defense Bronzong Ooh. coming out. Ooh. That could be huge. Token Kiss goes down, Bronzong dodges, but you'd much rather have that happen than the reverse. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Ooh, Gastro. Iron Defense Bronzong is so good in this matchup. Like the only way to deal Ooh. with it is that Gastro. But there's will -O Okay, that's huge. Wow, wow. Wait, yeah, I have a, yeah. wait, I have a button. Wow, wow. Can you guys hear that when I do that? I yeah, wait. Button. Wow, wow. That's from a button? That's yeah, not making that's, us yeah. I thought that was you. Uh, I can talk wah, both wah. at the same time. Wah, Look. Wah. <laughs> oh, a freeze! <laughs> Wow. What is going on? Skull that. auto thaws, right? Yes, but but that would mean that you'd have to use it in front of the opposing Gastron and give it a boost. Oh, oh wow. Really? Wow, oh, not even Skull, just out. naturally. <laughs> By the way, burn body press still doing 30% to the scissor is pretty terrifying. Stands as Dust Cops wakes up and sets Trick Room back up. A scissor protects in front of a double target. Kid gets a yawn onto the scissor and tries to reverse Trick Room, but a double target from Stands finishes off Bronzong and puts Stands in the lead. Six to four. Bronzong could have just swept through this whole team, I think, or it would have at least been really difficult to deal with and would have exerted a lot more pressure, but thanks to Will-O-Wisp, as we see Gastron go for another yawn here. Wow, wow. <laughs> Stans doesn't want to let Scissor fall asleep, so he switches it into his Gastrodon, but Kid makes an amazing play and protects Rhyperior as Dusclops tries to burn it and actually gets a yawn onto the Dusclops in return. With that Rotom Heat, Rotom Heat of almost Snow at the end of the game, I would not count him out. Absolutely. Yeah, great Especially rush. Especially he has nasty plot, I think. Oh, great, great switch. switch. Yeah, really, really good. Kid shows no signs of slowing down. Reading stands to switch out, he double attacks the Dusclops, putting it in KO range next turn. There is, of course, the Snorlax to consider. I think a lot of players may be opting to go for Facade and with Bronzong down on Kid's side, maybe a burn here would actually be, that could actually be really bad because Rhyperior and Gastron with recovery, we're gonna have to see here 
Uh, could be difficult. Dust Cups hang out with 1% and body... Oh, it's Body Slam! I forgot about oh. Body Slam! And Dust Cups is asleep. A huge burn from Rotom. It doesn't have the damage output anymore, but it doesn't need it. It can burn Snorlax and totally reduce its ability to do damage. Rotom switches out into Rhyperior, but... Gastron are finishing off Dust Clops. That's pretty huge, guys. That's one of the two Trick Room setters, and... If that's a weakness policy right here, which is common. Oh, oh, no. What a switch! Oh, my God. What a switch! He switched in weakness policy right here into, into high horsepower Snorlax. Can we, can we talk about the fact that Stan's went for a high horsepower onto the road? Like, I, I don't know if you didn't know about. Did he predict the right here and just not weakness <laughs> policy? That turn was ridiculous, and now Kid has a boosted right here next to Gastrodon on the field. The Pokemon count is still in Stan's favor at five to four, though. Stan sends out his Gastrodon once again. Now I'm curious, does the Gastrodon on the opposing side, like do you have a spread type water type attack to potentially hit the right here? And I love this wow, protecting wow. rock play, super safe. I love, I love this play. When you have, sometimes when you have a huge offensive Pokemon, people tend to get tunnel vision and they focus it down and knowing that that's a time where you can actually slow the pace of the game down and disrupt your opponent even more. If Stans gets rid of um, Kid's Gastrodon, then all of a sudden their Gastrodon is the best Rhyperior answer. But if they can't do that, um, I think it get really messy really quickly. But actually Earthquake takes out the Snorlax, but I don't know if that's a good trade. He does a ton of damage to Gastrodon. And we're actually seeing, I think we've seen all the moves. No, we're missing the last move from Gastrodon. It might be Scald though, but no protect means that it's actually in a really awkward spot for this Gastrodon where Rhyperior wants to Earthquake to take out the opposing Gastrodon. But uh, if it does that, it will KO the, the partner Gastrodon. So really, really, really tricky here. Stan sends out his Bronzong, a great Pokemon to wall Rhyperior, which then asks the question, will the Rhyperior protect? This turn is this turn is really interesting from both positions, right? Because it's like, what are the other attacks that Rhyperior has? Um, I don't think it actually is a great way to deal with Bronzong, and I don't think a plus two attack from it will actually KO the Gastron either. And Ooh. oh, that is a per that's a great play. It's an amazing play. Free! Oh! Oh! <laughs> Oh. oh my god, that is a huge freeze. Somehow we've had two freezes this match alone, which dramatically changes the position. Stans makes a great switch, bringing in Rhyperior as Kid goes for a rock slide. But Bronzong flinches and doesn't get to make a move for the turn. Kid switches into Rotom. But yeah, here's the Rotom switch. And good oh, switch, no protect. protect. <laughs> is it going to be enough? It, oh, it isn't. Oh, it is what? Oh my god, that's, that's solid rock coming into play. We see how good Rhyperior is here. Knocks out. Oh my gosh. And Bulldoze finishes oh, the Oh my god. <laughs> Both Rhyperior are down, which means each player is down to their final three Pokemon. Abomasnow and Gastrodon are sent out, giving Kid a ton of offensive pressure. Rotom burns Bronzong, but Gastrodon doesn't protect, allowing Abomasnow to KO Gastrodon. Stan sends out Scissor, which normally has a really bad matchup against Rotom. But will the combination of Life Orb and Trick Room let him turn things around? It's going to be pretty close here. The Hail actually going to be a big deal here in doing passive damage to that Bronze. Like a bonus note protects itself. Scissor protects itself. Oh! Gyro Ball, nice protect. Oh, oh he didn't call it! <laughs> oh my god! Scissor can't win a 1v3. And after a wild back and forth, Captain Kid wins the first round. A round two match was between Ray and Purple Cliff. Two players we hadn't seen yet, both with very interesting teams. Miss Magius and Infernape face off against Chatot and Raichu, all Pokemon we hadn't seen yet in this tournament. The turn one goes in Purple Cliff's favor, as his Infernape moves before Ray's Raichu and uses Fake Out to stop Chatot, as Miss Magius lowers both opponents' speed with Icy Wind. The turn two is passive, with each player switching out and Chatot protecting. Another slow turn three, but Chatot gets knocked out by Icy Wind, as Gyarados blocks Yawn with Protect. Raichu returns to the field and forces Gyarados into Hisuian Electrode, a new Pokemon with unusual typing. But Ray doesn't take the bait and instead takes the opportunity to paralyze Miss Magius. Double switch out here, but Mamoswine could be potentially taking a grass move here. That's oh, big damage. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, that thing hits hard. What the heck? Wow. Looks like thick fat Mamoswine here based on that damage, and that's a pretty big deal. Ice Shard. Oh, oh my god. Ice Shard takes the KO. <laughs> KO. Wait, it's Serene wow. Grace. It's Serene Grace uh, Togekiss with with uh with um shoot, what's it called? Ancient Power. So it could maybe boost. Wait, Sudowoodo. There's five Pokemon left on each side, but Sudowoodo feels like it could be pivotal. Will it threaten big KOs or just get knocked out in one shot? Gastrodon switches in and doesn't take nearly any damage, and now threatens Sudowoodo with Water type attacks. I've been impressed by this Miss Magius for what it's worth. Like the yeah, icy wind so shadow wall combo is so nice, and like. You have to remember, since it's using sword and shield rules, like you do have... Wait, how slow is the Sudowoodo? Oh my god! <laughs> Very slow. Ray still has four Pokemon left, but three of those are really low HP. 
Raichu uses Fake Out to stop Sudowoodo from causing any more problems. But because of all the icy winds, Paralyzed Miss Magius moves before Togekiss and finishes it off. Ray sends out Mamoswine as a last resort. I, it's a really tough spot, but I think he might be able to get a double knockout here. Oh, Sudowoodo does survive though. This Sudowoodo is broken. This Sudowoodo is so broken. Every time I look at it, I'm like, this thing is insane. With only Infernape left against four Pokemon, Purple Cliff cleans up and secures round two. Round three, we watch the match between Purple Cliff and Linkus, with Linkus using some very unusual Pokemon like Magmar and Lickitung. In the end, Purple Cliff's Sudowoodo barely clutched it out over Linkus's Lickitung, concluding round three. Round four, we decided to watch a very interesting matchup, RT versus Moxie. Both Moxie and Archie had been undefeated going into round three, and both of them had lost round three. Because this tournament was so difficult to win, another loss could easily eliminate them from the tournament. Gyarados and Ursaluna from Archie, Infernape and Gastrodon from Moxie. Gyarados on both sides, we're seeing some of the power of this Gyarados here. Oh no, the Storm oh, Drain! No! Oh, oh, that could be big. Gastrodon, I mean, it can't Dynamax. There's the Flame Orb, that's a very powerful Pokemon. But two water types, yeah, you're not going to want that. As Rosary is a great Pokemon to have. And both Gyarados getting <laughs> special attack boost plus two Gastron Yawns. Oh my gosh. The Gyarados switching back in. Gyarados yeah, this is a Fable fantastic switching. start. I love everything that's happening. <laughs> Please don't miss this. No damage has been dealt this game. Huge Sludge Bomb poisoned the Clefable. Dragon Dance. That's oh. really scary. Oh. That didn't do much at all. Wow. Knockoff and Flamethrower from Clefable. Not the move you see very often, but. I mean, good move to have here. Magic Arc Fable hanging in there. Bullet Punch into Roserade. What does Moxie have for this Gyarados? I mean, this is this is a really, really scary Pokemon to have on the field. Yeah, Intimidate's going to help out a lot as Rotom Heat switches in. Some cool teams here. Bullet Punch there. See, is it going to be another Dragon Dance? It is. Leftovers is gone, but it's clearly a very bulky Gyarados. This crunch is barely anything. And now Rotom Heat looks pretty scary here. Your only real option against it is this Garrett or Gastrodon. So... Yeah, RT is just looking really, 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 really powerful here. Preemptive switch, though. Okay, great switch. But yeah, great switches on both sides. Oh, big defense drop. Both players have been positioning well, and RT predicting the Gastrodon switch in and getting Roserade in early is really big. Both players make a great move, with Moxie saving his Gastrodon by switching into Scissor, and RT using Waterfall in addition to Leaf Storm to make sure nothing can switch in safely. Could really change the tide. Nice protect. Oh. 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 If Sleep Powder connects here, it would put RT just so far ahead. And actually, I love the switch here especially based on the last move. There's no reason to let your Intimidate go down for no reason. You can oh stay with and do a double up. And Sludge Bomb comes out. I mean, it's not bad damage at all, and you're killing up even more. And once again, Rotom threatening both Pokemon pretty significantly here. Another great switch from RT again exerts enormous offensive pressure. But this time, Rotom is on the field next to Roserade, making switching in Gastrodon very dangerous. Every Pokemon switches out except for Roserade, who uses Sleep Powder to put Gastrodon to sleep. But Infernape hitting the field is very dangerous for Archie. At some point, there has to be an aggressive play. Not this turn, though. Gyarados switching out for Sneasler as Rosary protects. But a close combat into the into the Sneasler. Sixty-eight <laughs> percent. I don't think I don't know anything about Sneasler, but based on this interaction, I don't think it's very good. Moxie sends out his shiny Baneri, which takes the fake out well. But Rosary finishes off Gastrodon despite the special attack drop, putting Archie up six Pokemon to four. Moxie sends out Infernape once again, which is threatening KOs on three of four of RT's team at this point. Infernape takes out the Sneasler, but not before Sneasler does a ton of damage first. RT sends out Garchomp, who KOs Baneri with a critical hit, as well as the Scissor that switched in, maybe expecting Dragon Claw. At this point, Moxie is down two to five, and RT sacrifices Gyarados to ensure Garchomp takes out Infernape, further solidifying the lead as four to one. Gyarados can't win on its own, and RT takes round four with a very impressive win. Round five, we decided to revisit two players we'd seen before, Jaden and Purple Cliff. Both players were three wins and one loss, meaning they were in contention to make it out of their pools, as nobody at this point was undefeated in pool B. Okay, so we're jumping in here and Electrode, yeah, I think Electrode is kind of a big deal. We see pressure on the Dust Cops, might be a mistake there. Taunt from the Electrode, I didn't really, I didn't consider Taunt Electrode. Now this Clefairy is kind of a sitting duck, huh? Gastrodon switching in here. Is it going to go down here? Rain Dance happened. Oh, yeah, Rain Dance! Rain Dance, Dust Cops, Taunt! But Gastron's online now. 
Gastron and Gastron, the friends. Oh, huge damage. Oh, but it survives. Okay, that's huge. If you get to KO one with the energy ball, yeah. Wow, big KO there. Electro going low. Okay, but I mean, I feel like Purple Club has kind of handled this a fair bit, you know? Surf coming out. Jaden doesn't care about attacking into Clefairy. Oh <laughs> that's so yeah, funny. Electro going down though is a big deal as Togenka switches in. Dust Club switching back in. I think we're gonna see another Surf here. Jaden just KOing all her partners. Let's find out here. Surf again. She doesn't oh. care about Dust Club. She, she KOs her on Dust she Club. She wants to take any Pokemon out on the field with Gastrodon. It's Gastron versus the world. Yeah, seriously. Fago coming out. Hopefully this isn't a follow me from Jaden. Air Slash into the Inferno, bringing it down to Focus Sash. Dazzling Gleam as well. Critical hit in the ga uh, Gastrodon, taking it really low, but the, <gasps> the berry. That's a huge That's berry big. activation. Protect from Togekiss. Air Slash. I think that Scarf Togekiss. Is it going to be Surf again? It's Recover! Oh, the Recover! What? Oh. Sudowoodo coming no in way. here. Helping hand for the Togekiss. Air Slash into the Sudowoodo. It's Serene Grace. Uh, Flinch! Oh, it Flinch! <laughs> oh my gosh. And the Sudowoodo falls super low. Also, by the way, the rain is still up, so that means that it has to be... Um, it has to be uh, a Damp Rock Dust Clops. <laughs> Ice Beam into the horse. Freeze! Whoa! <laughs> what is happening in. Right now? Follow me. Sucker Punch fails. Oh! Dazzle Gleam <laughs> is not going to do enough. Clefairy hangs on. Is it Surf? No, it's Ice Beam. Sudowoodo down. And it's just... Oh, I don't know if Gyarados and Togekiss are going to be enough here. That Gengar in the back is going to be... I mean, that is a scary <laughs> Pokemon. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> okay, so one thing to note, by the way, is that people are gonna be like, oh lol, like Purple Cliff forgot about Storm Drain, but actually follow me overwrite Storm Drain. So if, if Purple Cliff predicted the follow me, um, then then actually that's a good play. So uh Ally Switch is actually one of the few ways you can get around that. Well, okay, that time it's on them though. Um <laughs> <laughs> Jaden takes out Purple Glyph's token gives, and it's plus two Gastrodon against Gyarados with Gengar in the back. With only Gyarados left, Jaden's Gastrodon and Gengar are able to clean up and put her at four wins and one loss. Round six was the penultimate round of the tournament, so things were really heating up. We decided to watch RT versus Failboat, a match which could have big implications for the winner of Group B. I don't think we've actually seen Failboat's team, but they have the Sui and Zorark, so I'm glad we're watching here. Um, and we see, once again, that, that very scary team from RT, so... We'll have to see here. Hyper Voice Cardivore. Oh, that could be... Wait, no, that's not Pixelate. Oh, boom. <laughs> <laughs> not enough damage, unfortunately. And Dragon's coming out. Wait, was it... No, did it was it... Is it... Ah, oh, which is the real one? Die all along. I think that must be... Oh, wait. Wait, how fast is Zor... Wait, Zorg is faster than Garrett plus one. What the heck? Oh, is it Scar? Yeah, wait, no, no, it's no, Sash. No. no, it's... Yeah, what am I missing? Oh, oh man. Oh, what is happening? Please I don't know. Oh wait, there's Chansey too. I kind of forgot Chansey was in this game. Chansey, a very uh, volatile Pokemon. Ice Shard coming out, not picking up the KO. Oh, it's clearly no. defensive, but I think Zorark's gonna get both here. I think, I'm pretty sure. Our okay. could have KO'd the, um, the Zorark and then Gyarados could have just waterfall. To yeah, off, so. 100%. Unless, no, it's not choice. I don't know what I'm saying, yeah. Bailboat sends out Chansey as RT sends out Garchomp and Roserade. Roserade protects as Garchomp finishes off Zorark, but not before Zorark does about a third of Garchomp's health. Failboat sends out his final Pokemon, Lucario, but because Chansey is so bulky, it definitely can make a comeback if Garchomp is dealt with. Garchomp decides to Earthquake despite it damaging Roserade, and it picks up the one-hit KO on Lucario. With only Chansey left, there's no hope for the annoying egg, and RT wins another round, putting him at five wins and one loss. The final round of the round robin portion is here. At the end of this round, the top scorer in each group will advance to a two out of three grand finals. In group A, Pokemon Challenges has guaranteed his top spot. In Group B, however, it's possible for any of Jaden, RT, or Moxie to advance under the right circumstances. We decide to watch RT's game, as if he wins, he'll advance to the Grand Finals no matter what. If Jaden loses, that also means RT Exactly. Well, yeah. uh, unless Moxie also w wins, Yes, right? yeah, <laughs> they, if they both lose and Moxie wins, we go to three-way. Moxie oh. won. Hang on, I just got oh, word. Okay. So if I, the other two <laughs> lose, then we'll have to see. I think if RT wins, it, that guarantees it. If RT loses and Jaden wins, then that guarantees it. And if both RT and Jaden lose, then we then I have to figure out some complicated tiebreakers. But Ice Fang going into the list score, not going to take it out here. That's a really slow Gyarados, by the way. That's plus one speed, and it was still slower than the uh, Glide score. So definitely interesting here. Seeing Maybe the value of Black Sludge. Go ahead. Sorry. 
I was just trying to think of like the the reasoning behind that. Maybe something with Trick Room, but it's just a, a very interesting. Yeah, maybe bulky, bulky Gyarados, I guess. Yeah, I mean, this, they're getting a lot of value out of leftovers. It's so hard to get any damage on this Gyarados, you know. Roost again. Just the thing is that makes you vulnerable to Leaf Storm. We'll see if they capitalize. Another Dragon is that also makes Ooh. you very vulnerable. It's just Leaf Pattern at the wall right. Yeah, just seeing the power of Gyarados plus um, Rose right here and. Gonna be pretty tough. Gyarados, yep, yeah, a plus two. Oh. Gonna take out the Gly score. Leaf Storm to the wall rain. Actually, because of the oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh. And RT is looking poised. playing like he wants the championship. Something I think is really interesting, by the way, is that Group A had like all the Trick Room teams, whereas Group B really, really didn't. So, um, yeah. So it'll be interesting to kind of see. I don't think I, I would imagine that RT hasn't had to play against that many Trick Room teams, but double up into the Luxray. Ooh. Luxray hangs on. Thunderfang. Somehow doesn't take out the Gyarados, huh? Bulky Gyarados. Wow. Ah, I guess you can see the value in that bulk. And Reflect sets up again. Garchomp switching in here, but Waterfall into the Bronze Line at plus one. Leaf Storm once again into the Garchomp. I mean, having two loads. getting so much free damage right now. Yeah. It's, this this uh, Rosary has really impressed me. Like, I've never seen Rosary stick on the field for so long in any VGC match. Yeah, seriously. And this Gyarados, too, is just so bulky. Like, that's like probably 150 base power Gyro Ball, and it just doesn't matter. Luxray coming in back in here. Ice Fang. This, this, no, this Bronzong doesn't have sleep. It uh, doesn't have sent him, but that was another one. Bronzong taking a nap. And yeah, you take out the Gyarados, but I do feel like this team just has so many threats. And, you know, by the time you feel you deal, feel like most people are dealing with Gyarados, then they're still, they're up, you know, down three to five. So, uh, Rose reaching out here. Earthquake coming out, not doing anything. Unfortunately, Bronzong takes a second sleep from here. Yep. And now you have burned Ursaluna. It's going to be very difficult to get through this because it has insane oh. bulk. Truly Big Bertha, I am really excited to see that if he is able to move on to the final round, we have not seen a lot of this thing. It's not going to be easy to deal with. That thing is a monster. Ursaluna barely survives Garchomp's Dragon Claw and finishes it off, leaving only Gyarados who gets one shot by the Rotom. Jaden also wins her last round, putting her at a score of six wins and one loss. But because she lost to RT, he advances to the finals to face off against Pokemon Challenges. The finals begin with Yon leading off with Bronzong and Rhyperior against Arty's Ursaluna and Gyarados. The first turn goes perfectly for Yon, as Arty protects and Dragon Dances as Bronzong sets Trick Room. Octillery, however, decides to sabotage Yon and gets a speed boost with Moody, making it slower in Trick Room. Arty switches out Ursaluna and Waterfall's Bronzong, as Yon sets Reflect and scalds the now Roserade, which burns it. Bronzong sets Light Screen, and Octillery KOs Roserade, while Gyarados is stuck waterfalling Bronzong for 20%, giving Yon an early lead. RT sends out the Sneasler. I just think uh, Trick Room is so hard to break through here. Like that turn one alone was already really strong. Ooh. And <laughs> oh, wow. That is really interesting. Yeah, that's actually a big deal because, yeah, for a number of reasons. But yeah, it's the last turn of Trick Room, and if both these Pokemon protect, uh, all of a sudden, I mean, this isn't so bad anymore, I think, but we'll have to see here. RT protects to stall the last turn of Trick Room, putting the speed back in his favor. RT's worried about Dustnor or Will O Wisping his Gyarados, so he switches into Rotom, but Yawn instead opts to set up another Trick Room and scald the Sneasler. However, it does mean at least that the Octillery is on a timer, so it can't stick around for forever. Whereas, like, I feel like if the poison didn't happen, like, you, you can't just spam Scald entirely. But here's a Poltergeist, and this, uh, Dustner has been really impressive offensively as well. Nice switch in for the Discharge, and the Octillery oh. is able to survive! This burns, I think it's really bad for RT. Oh, yeah. oh it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Oh. RT takes his first KO, but things are looking pretty grim, with Lumberry used on Garchomp, and both Garchomp and Rotom damaged. Yon sends out Rhyperior, an incredibly powerful Pokemon. Gyarados switching in here, could be an Earthquake coming out, but... A little bit scary. Ice oh, punch. Oh, oh, oh. Jeez. He's got ice punch. And yeah, it goes for the poltergeist. Garchomp going down there is really bad, but it does allow RT to bring in his Sneasler once again. Unfortunately for RT, Gyarados gets burned, and Sneasler protects despite not being targeted. It's the last turn of Trick Room, but Gyarados being burnt means RT might not be able to stop a third Trick Room from going up. It's so tough because I feel like so many of the main uh, nice. like sweepers that people have used have been these physical attackers as well, right? And yeah. so just being able to burn them is such a big deal. That was a really, really good switch. I, I'm really happy with these plays all around for RT. I mean, that is that's this is what you have to do. I don't know if it's going to be enough to break through. This is the opportunity, the one turn to make a big play. Obviously, the Will-O-Wisp is really going to hurt, but there's not much any of the Pokemon on the field can do to Ursaluna. Ursaluna and Gyarados together stop Trick Room from being set up. 
evening the Pokemon count at 4 to 4. Yon sends up Bronzong, and it looks like there's no way for Archie to stop Trick Room from going up again. We've seen a lot of freezes and some crazy little bits of hacks. You never know when there's a flinch. Not much damage. Facade isn't enough. Facade. Oh, just barely! Oh my god! Is there a flinch? Wow. Oh. It does flinch! Oh my god! That flinch was massive and it stops Trick Room from being set up again. If Snorlax doesn't have Protect, it can be Waterfall into the Bronzong and Facade into the, let's see, Ursaluna going for an attack, Facade, that should be enough. Lax is down oh and Yon God. is on the back foot. Somehow a game that was looking unwinnable has swung around and put RT poised to win. The problem though is Rhyperior. Rhyperior can KO all of RT's Pokemon from the amount of HP they have left, doesn't care about Rotom, and isn't especially bothered by the Burnt Gyarados. I think Rhyperior might be enough here. We'll have to see. It's going to yeah, be really like, close. Yeah, like Rock Slide's so good, and the uh, Ursaluna faints from one more turn of Burn. Could Could pivot Gyarados out here, expecting him to like double protect and then like bring it back in for an Intimidate. Nizar does have a Poison type attack, so you can use that. I just, yeah, it's, it's struggle to see how you KO the Rhyperior. He's like, oh, what? Big damage. No, no. No protect, no follow me. Oh, it's faster. <laughs> oh. oh my God. Oh my God. Oh no, no. It's the <laughs> oh, <beach out. laughs> oh no, but this, it's all gonna come down to the Sneasler. Those are words I never thought I'd say. Go Sneasler. Thanks to Minimize, this game is not over. Can the Sneasler land a poison jab? Let's finish it, but poison jab connects and RT wins game one. We jump into game two, this time from Yon's perspective, and see the leads are a bit different from both players. Dust Noir and Octillery from Yon's side, Rotom and Roserade from RT. Vulnerable to Rotom, yeah, Snorlax is a great switch here, but Sleep Powder doesn't yep. make the bait. Discharge hitting the Roserade, let's see where the Paras oh. land. Nowhere. That's a way better turn one for RT than last game, as Trick Room doesn't go up. Ursula switching in here. As the discharge Ooh. comes out, I love that. That's so cool. Let's see if Dustin Nora wakes There's up. There's the opportunity to wake up. Yeah, that's what's scary. Gives him the chance. He crashed for 10%. Oh, one turn oh. sleep. Oh. A turn one sleep is a 33% chance, but Yon was definitely overdue for some good luck. Ursaluna has a really good matchup against both of Yon's Pokemon. So bringing it in there basically for free was excellent timing. Bronzong switches in for Yon, but... Belly drum from the last. Belly oh! drum. Making an offensive Whoa. play, but yeah, not gonna pay off here. What did the Rotom go for? Pretty much all of its moves would be pretty effective. Discharge, Charge, yeah. yeah. But that's a lot of damage, guys. Octillery re-enters the field. Only this time, Trick Room is up, and Roserade isn't on the field. I mean, if Pokemon Channel just gets the right screen up, that's right. That yeah, could that's right. That. That's right. I hadn't thought about the screen. Right. I mean, that's that's what I was saying earlier. Earlier, right? I mean, the screens are just such a big deal. Oh, oh my god, is it though? Oh <laughs> boy. <laughs> oh, and it's the Sneasler, folks. The Sneasler, <laughs> It's no. time for the Sneasler. <laughs> we'll say though, like RT not switching on Rotom or protecting there means that now your Bronzong's at least gonna hang around for maybe a little bit longer. And if you can get another Trick Room up, that would be mm. huge. And there's the Poison Touch. What's Ursaluna gonna do here in Earthquakes? It says, I hate you, Sneasler. <laughs> 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 uh, but with the poison, so I is on a timer, unfortunately. I hate to say it, but the Sneasler getting another poison touch fake out is pretty big. It's the last turn of Trick Room, but this match is far from over, as it looks like Yawn will be able to set Trick Room up once more. RT takes a risky switch into Gyarados and protects Ursaluna, but Yawn opts to double into the Ursaluna as Trick Room ends. Ursaluna switches into Garchomp as Rhyperior goes into Dust Noir, and Trick Room goes up once again. Four more turns for RT to get through before the speed returns to his favor. I think it becomes pretty difficult if he uh if it goes down. And actually, Rocky or Ruskin doing actually a fair bit of work here as Willis goes into Gyarados. That's a big deal. Gyarados takes out the Dust Noir. And Garchomp swords Whoa. dances. Ooh. Wow, that is scary. RT is up five to three, but Rhyperior is very threatening to every Pokemon he has left thanks to the Ice Punch. And body pressing the Gara, no protects. Ice. Oh, Rock Blast misses! Oh, that's unfortunate. I, wow. I don't think it would have mattered. I think it makes a difference, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> no. it's, it's salt in the wound. It definitely didn't help, but I, I do think that, the, you know, even if that turn goes well, Rhyperior still goes down to plus two Garchomp, and yep. this Gyarados probably doesn't have that much impact on the rest of the battle, given that Intimidate doesn't even matter, like, for these two Pokemon. But, I mean, where there's a minimized Clefable... I was about to say, he needs to switch that Gyarados out. You cannot let, you know, minimize Clefable get too many of those up. Like, bring something in that threatens it. I think I think Roserade's the play right here. You can yes. save Sneasler as a backup, but yeah. Oh, actually, big damage from Body Press. I'm a little impressed. And here, here comes <laughs> the special. Oh, boy. 
Oh, Iron Head Oh, oh wow. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, wow. Oh, he sit up in my chair. I wasn't expecting that at all. I don't think we've really seen Garchomp from RT. There has not been many battles where a Garchomp mm -hmm. of all Pokemon is needed to be used, which is crazy to say. Mm -hmm. But that's Bronzong. I think we talked about that in the, the earliest segment, Aaron. You know, Bronzong's going to nullify Garchomp in a big way, and we've really seen it. Yon doubles the Garchomp with body press and stored power, taking it out. But Tricker Men's and Reflect expires. RT responds by sending out his Roserade. The thing is, Clefable still has that Minimize boost. If the Clefable gets another Minimize up, it's only going to become more and more. Yeah, that's going to be oh, it. Yeah. Oh, it. That's oh my it. gosh. Smart. There's no way I think now for Yon. And even insult to oh, Andrew. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the flinch. Gyarados is the. MVP, That's I so think, of this set. so much salt in the wounds. Oh, <laughs> man. At least it didn't matter. I think the Sludge Bomb connecting will, will steal it there. And RT is your first ever Pokemon Legends Arceus Invitational Champion. And just like that, we had our winner. I'd like to say another congratulations to RT, as well as a huge thank you to all the creators who helped make this event possible. Running an event with tons of creators was really stressful, but I couldn't have asked for a nicer field of competitors. I'd also like to say thank you to John and Aaron for being the best co-commentators I could ask for, as well as you for watching and supporting. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time for more Pokemon content.